Hey everyone, my name is Renata and welcome to my channel. Today we will be learning or maybe practicing variegated washes and also some silhouette paintings of distant city, maybe some buildings and nearer trees and grasses. I'm um, starting off with privetting the entire paper. First, I drew only the horizon line, so I would know where to place the middle of my painting. And then I pre-wash the entire paper and afterwards I'm just mixing azure blue and some sepia to mix in that beautiful blue that isn't so vibrant, but a little bit duller. And I'm painting in the top of my painting where the sky is and also the lowest part of my painting where the water is. I will be painting the sky and water absolutely same. Only difference, I would add a couple of details to the water to make it look as though there is some water. And it will be still water, but with a couple of waves to make it look like it is slightly moving and there is some action in that water. In the middle part, I'm using cadmium yellow medium because I want that part to be a little bit yellowish. We are painting sunset. And when painted variegated washes, I never start painting them from the part where I stopped with one paint. Meaning when I paint, as I did here, blue sky in the upper part, I won't start with my yellow where I finished with my blue because it would mix and create green. And sometimes when you mix two colors on your paper, they will get a little bit muddy, you know, so I avoid starting off with my, when painting washes, I avoid starting off painting from the part where I finished with one color with another color. But I'm just starting off a little bit underneath that color or maybe as I did here in the middle part because, you know, I will be using only two colors and I'm just going upwards to that previous colors. I think that is the best way to get beautiful clear colors and not muddy colors. So just keep that in one mind when painting variegated washes. There are some colors who that is fine, you know, for, for them to mix. If I would be if I were using here some uh, blue and then some pink, it would be fine to mix them. They would create some beautiful uh, violet color and that would be fine for the sky. But I don't want the green actually in my sky in a, in a part where the blues are and the yellows are. So I'm avoiding them to touch, you know, just to start painting because, you know, when you're going upwards, you're losing that pigment. It is already, as I, as I say, spent on your paper. So there is not so much pigment in your brush. And when you got get to the part where there is blue, you, you, you won't have that much pigment and it probably won't mix into the green. So there is a smaller risk that you will get green in the sky. But if you want green in the sky, of course, go ahead. You can mix them and start from the blue. Afterwards, when the paint completely dried, I put washi tape on my horizon line because that would make it easier for me to create a straighter line. It didn't finish end up to be straight because my paint wasn't completely dry. So the washi tape didn't adhere to the paper completely, but it doesn't matter. I would be painting those reflections anyway, but I did want to avoid to make it go uh, downwards too much because, you know, if, if it did go too much, I, it maybe it wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to create a beautiful, you know, and realistic reflection. So I try to avoid it by using a washi tape. And when finished with that, I was also using some fizzled brush because I wanted to create some tree like looking silhouettes in a distance. So I used a flat brush and a fizzled brush. This is just an old brush with stiff bristles. And when finished with that also, I privated the part underneath my horizon line and then painted in the reflection and just left the paint to bleed slightly because I don't want that part to be absolutely clear. I do want it to be slightly blurred. After the paint completely dried, I'm um, using just brush where I slightly rinsed into my water and then dry it on a towel to smudge a little bit that black paint and then just picking up a little bit of the paint, not adding any water in my brush and making some dry brush strokes 
looking like there is some still reflection further away in the water and there is some movement in the water and after that with flat brush this is a smaller flat brush i think it's number 12 i'm just picking up the paint i didn't actually dip that brush into paint but the paint you can see that black is actually from the picking up the paint from the reflection so it just stays in my brush and adds that little black line so it's actually perfect for painting the water because you know it picks up a little bit of that black paint and adds it to the part that is lighter and also picks up from the part where the black is and make it a little bit lighter so it just looks like there are some reflection there is some light reflecting in that part of the water Afterwards, I mixed white gouache with the golden because I wanted to make it slightly opaque because, you know, when you're adding just watercolors on top of darker watercolors, of course, they won't be visible. But when you mix it with white gouache, it does make it slightly lighter and more creamier, but also it makes it a little bit more opaque. And with that paint, I'm painting in the horizon line because I do want the part between the trees and the buildings from in the distance be slightly separated from the reflection in the water with that a little bit lighter color and then I've added a little bit more of the white gouache to the golden and go on top of it and I did not try actually to make it perfectly straight but I did make it slightly wiggly because you know it in my opinion that looks a little bit more realistic it's not that we're going for realism here but you know i think it looks better so uh, that is how i did it and also added a couple of those lines with that mix on the reflection itself to add a little bit more of the interest to it after that i'm using just a script brush liner brush to paint in some movement in the water i wouldn't even say those are actually waves there are just some lines you know some darker parts shadows just to you know the movement in the water maybe some some reflections some shadows some light play you know so adding a little bit of that mix again of azure blue and sepia in the part where the blue of the water is and in the part where the yellow and the golden is i'm adding those two colors and also adding them a little bit into the part where the blue is after that i'm painting in the silhouette of the land in the lowest part of my painting and i'm using neutral black for that that i've added just a little bit of that mix of blue and sepia into it because i don't want it to be completely black but just with touch of that paint that I used for water and then with a detail brush I'm painting in some grasses some weeds and on the bottom of the grass I'm pressing my brush a little bit harder and going upwards I'm pressing it a little bit slighter I'm just taking it up from the paper and that is how I'm actually painting those grasses I also decided to paint in some trees some tree branches going on the top of my painting on the right and on the left side and for that i'm using a dagger brush and just with the tip of that brush tapping in the leaves and i'm not trying to paint every single leaf to look same but just on the bottom part i'm pressing it a little bit harder to make a little bit bigger leaves and going downwards i'm paint pressing it a little bit slighter to make some smaller leaves and with a script brush, I'm adding some couple of smaller, thinner branches sticking out from my leaves. And, you know, they make it look a little bit more, again, realistic and a little bit more believable. That is my opinion. I'm not really painting in the branches, just on the top of them, adding those little lines looking like branches sticking from the leaves. And again, with the fizzled, old fizzled stiff brush, I'm painting in the tree on the left side. That is slightly different tree than that one picking from the from the upper part and again after that adding those branches sticking out from the leaves and with that smaller script brush also tapping in some leaves at the ends 
In my opinion, painting wouldn't be finished without a couple of sprinkles. So I'm adding those on the part of that tree on the left. And you know, I love sprinkles, so I have to find a place to put them in. And also after that, I will add a couple of more details into the sea. And with that, I'll be finishing off this painting. And of course, this video, thank you guys a lot for watching, for all your support. I want you to know that I really, really appreciate a lot every single comment you give me. And, you know, I love when, when I see your feedback. It always makes me happy, whatever it is. If you like it, if you don't like it, just say it to me. I love to, to get that feedback from you. So I know in the future maybe what to change and what, you, what to do, what you really like. And if you like this video, please hit the like button, share it, comment. If you haven't still, please subscribe to my channel. It would really, really mean a lot to me. And without further ado, I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.